Are we rolling? We are rolling. Every <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> it's Tuesday. How's everyone doing? Doing grand. How are you doing? Good. So, Rob, wow, we're here on day two of the five pound challenge, uh, coming live from Hamilton, Bermuda, and live from Miramichi, New Brunswick. New Brunswick. <laughs> so, I'm just I've been still having technical difficulties. I'm just going to make sure that we are up and running, that everything is good here. Okay. So there we are. Yes, we are doing good. So Rob, Yes. Uh, so day two. So how are things going for you? How are you making out? Good, good. I'm amazing. I'm loving this challenge. Everything about it. It's starting out the day positive and stuff. And uh, as you see, I posted my video there. Remember, we had a little challenge going on. So I set mine up there. For our uh, feel good yesterday, you know, your inner child, I had, to, I had some fun. <laughs> we danced a little bit, had some movement. So <laughs> my, my challenge is done. We're just waiting on the docks now. <laughs> well, I do want the viewers to know that, yes, I am <laughs> prepping a challenge and there will be uh, children involved as well. So anyway, I need to, it's raining here in Bermuda today. So when the sun comes back out, we'll be ready to post our video. It's going to be fun. <laughs> Sounds good. And uh, so today I picked for in that category again for number one, I picked express your gifts. So I had I'd written a poem a little while ago and I, I like to write and stuff and helps me think. And then uh, I thought I play my guitar. So I posted up a video of uh, I took the poem and turned it into a song and I put that out there. So that was my way of sort of thinking about, uh, you know, what you can do and how you can be creative in yourself. I like that, Rob, you know, um, many people have different gifts, but the, the gift of basically being able to, to write poetry, <laughs> um, and, but the gift of music, you know, it's something I think that we, we lose a lot now. I know in, when I was a kid in school, everyone had to do music and it was so much fun for all of us, um, but we can bring out that creativity in any way, but thanks again for posting that, uh, that song. So we'll hear it a little bit later today. Uh, I'll post it on the page. Yeah, great. Sounds good. Uh, for number two was uh, observe your thoughts. So th for this one, yesterday, I noticed that uh, somewhere along the day between work and, and fatigue and tiredness and just trying to figure out all kinds of things in your life when you get kind of to a place where it's, you get scrambled, I thought, I can't think anymore. I just felt totally bewildered. So I went home in the middle of the afternoon and uh, took a break and had a bath. Imagine around four o'clock in the afternoon. And I said, yeah, I'm just going to stop my thoughts for a minute and just calm down. Best thing happened to me. It was great. Yeah. And, you know, when you were kind of in that process of kind of that observation phase, I guess this is what we often look at is that many people don't slow down, right? And they try to push through it. Um, so when you first kind of came upon this kind of feeling of fatigue, what was it that you said in your body? Like, how did that kind of register to you that, okay, my body needs this break? Well, I was trying to measure something and I had measured it about five times and, and I just couldn't keep the measurement in my head. And then I was thinking about these other things and I was trying to figure out how I was going to get to this certain place and have this thing done on time. And I was, none of it, I wasn't getting answers to anything anymore. So I was like, I just can't think anymore. I need to go take a break or stop or something. <laughs> so yeah, just not being able to finish conclusion get the thoughts to the end and it's so great like this is what autonomic pairing is about right it's this ability to connect our autonomic our, our automatic nervous system with our brain and what's going on and the ability to recognize this um, to know that we need to stop and take a break to know that we're tired or fatigued you know this really is a key measure of health and so many times individuals push through and then mistakes happen because or, you know, you measure wrong because you're working on a house right now, Rob. Yeah. And what's that? Accidents can happen too. If you, if you work past your fatigue and go past where you can be, you can easily hurt yourself. Right. But what does the carpenter say? You measure like three times or <laughs> measure something? Measure twice, cut once. <laughs> but once you get to the fifth measurement and you haven't done anything yet, it's time to, it's time to take a break. <laughs> So again, that, so that's a great, that's a great ability for you to, uh, to recognize that level of awareness. So thanks for sharing your um, point for autonomic pairing. Thank you. Well, and then yesterday I, I practiced eating in that eight hour window, you know, not having snacks at night and making sure before the sun 
<laughs> went down that I was done eating for the day, prepared myself for it. And uh, I, that was a good idea. I, I think hopefully it, I'm going to get used to that, doing that every day. Do you it's think that's going to For me, I have to rearrange my schedule a little bit because I'm often working late and I've, I've been working all day and I didn't eat much. So I might snack at night or something. So it's just a matter of rearranging when I eat. So it sounds like it needs a little bit of preparation or planning for you to establish it as a regular habit. Yeah, yeah. I, I probably should get stuff ready in advance rather than just grabbing something on the go here and there. And I think when we look at people that are being successful with whatever they do, whether it's weight loss or health or a project or completion, when we have a plan and when we get into a routine, it just makes it much easier for us. That's true. Uh, one person posted yesterday that when they were prepping their vegetables and, you know, their food for the week that they did a whole like pan of roast vegetables. And so even those simple little things that, you know, if you're going to be busy and on the, or on the road, or maybe you're a shift worker is to get those meals prepared even two or three days ahead of time, um, just to make it easy. Cause what the, that kiss principle, the keep it, uh, what is it? Keep it simple, stupid, or, but we'll just call it, keep it, keep it simple principle is that that's what we want to do is we want to create healthy lifestyles that just kind of are, are easy, right? We're trying to make this about having a lot of fun. So yeah, so your eight hour window, if you kind of just start to prep and plan a little bit more, I have the feeling you're gonna be uh, really successful on that. That's a good thing. And then uh, number four, I chose the eliminating lighting. So a couple hours before I go to bed, I just put on just a little, night light there when I'm going to read or write or whatever it is I'm going to do. And then uh, not so much light and heavy light on my eyes. Yeah, a wonderful principle. You know, we're exposed to so many things. And uh, uh, even right now, I'm, I'm um, staying in, a, in a, a friend's home. And there's a lot of lights in the bedroom that I'm not used to. So I literally have taken a blanket and covered it over some lights. Because just that little bit of light can actually register in our brain. It tells us that it's not quite right because we are meant to sleep in absolute darkness. Um, and then, like you said, turning down your lights before bedtime, that's a great, uh, a great trick and a great habit to a restful night's rest sleep. No, I probably will. I, I haven't, but I should probably post up what I eat each day. I'll post up, show you what I eat on your site there for, uh, and then you can <laughs> make comments about it or whatever. Say no, Rob, or yes, Rob, but uh, you'll get an idea of what I eat each day. I'll post those up on, on the page there. Great. Perfect. One and the last question. thing is, uh, oh, it's, well, I go for a walk every night now at Richie's Wharf. It's just a small little thing. We had a, a little center here where you walk around. It's right by the water, and there's a dock there, and it's real nice, and there's ducks and all kinds of stuff. So I just go do a few laps around there just to sort of tone down before whatever I'm going to do next. Yeah, and walking's wonderful physical activity, right? Now, how do you, when you're walking, what happens to your brain? Like, when, since we're talking about kind of pairing today, when you walk. Oh, I'm figuring out what's next after the walk, usually. <laughs> usually, I, I do art at night, so I'm figuring out the next painting I'm going to be working on or what, what I want to do, what level I want to go to, and I'm looking around at colors and how light reflects off the water or reflects off the dock or off the building, how the sandstone goes a certain Thing at a certain time and I'm always checking out things. So it sounds like then if you're looking at your surroundings that you're actually being mindful as well, Rob, that's another point. Oh, that's <laughs> you're good. being present, right? You're paying attention to the clouds or the moon or reflections. And this is what yeah. mindfulness is about. Well, that's good. Yeah. Bonus. So getting a bonus there, you know, and I guess that leads us into, you know, today is that, you know, our, our nervous system, what is the quote? It's your nervous sense system is not meant to be nervous all the time. Um, you know, shortly, I'm going to be posting a video for folks. I'm going to be teaching my nieces who are six and eight. I'm going to teach them a little bit about the brain. And actually, I wanted to do that to actually educate all of us because we often don't realize that, you know, our brain has two systems. We have a stress system and we have a relaxation system. And when our brain is going in stress mode all of the time, and if we don't have time for recovery or relaxation, then number one, our body's not going to heal. And when it comes to weight loss, then the weight loss is going to be extremely difficult for people. Um, and I know that's why many people are here this week. So is there a certain food you should eat 
so that your body does its work better. Like when you eat your main meal, well, for me, I only eat one meal a day, but when I eat my meal, is there something you should have in there so that it, it, your body digests it well over the night? So it really, um, what we're looking for in meals is whole food, right? So yeah. it's more of the foods maybe not to have, because if you start to have processed sugars, for example, if you're eating boxes of cereal, if you're eating uh, you know, granola bars, things that are highly refined, what happens is that those things have a very high sugar index, okay? Uh, many people, if you're a diabetic, you might know this as the glycemic index, and it will spike your blood sugar. When it does that, it actually triggers a whole series of pathways in our body, and it can trigger inflammation. It can trigger us to be a little bit irritable. But also, when we have a really big spike, then we have a big drop. So many times then, when people have the drop, that's when they get cravings. That's when they get fatigued. They get really tired. So when we're thinking about food, when we think about whole food, uh, what will happen is that our body's not going to have such a huge spike and such a huge drop. So we're going to be more level. So that leveling of the blood sugar is also going to help us be more level in our mind and be more clear in our mind. You know, one of the things that people have described uh, to me is having brain fog. And this has come up in the group as well. And often this brain fog comes when you're living a kind of a high sugar level. And then when the sugar drops, you feel so exhausted. So if we can have foods, so if we can have whole foods, uh, you know, like vegetables that have a lot of fiber in them, if we can have protein, because protein is going to help to sustain the sugar at a more steady state. And if we can have healthy sources of fat, like, you know, extra virgin olive oil, coconut, avocado, um, then those things are going to keep us more level sugar and level minded. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's awesome. So really what I'm starting to get out of this five pound challenge is that it's uh, you're, you're trying to get yourself in an organized manner of how you sleep, how you eat, how you think, so that every day you're in the same steady rhythm and you, you can control your weight and your thinking and how you feel and your fatigue and stuff like that. Right. You've got it. You know, it's, it's to develop a steady state and to anchor it in. So this is a key thing. Like Take we a had habit. A, a habit last night, we had a huge storm. The trees were blowing everywhere. And I looked out and I saw these coconut trees and these coconut trees are swaying like back and forth in the wind. And they're just, you know, they're skinny, like a coconut tree is not like a big uh, maple or oak that we have at home. It's very thin, but it's rooted. It's anchored so much in the ground. So this program is about beginning to get yourself anchored, because once you get anchored, then when the trials of life start to come, when we have those days where we get off schedule or we get a flat tire or someone says something to us or, you know, there's an outbreak of COVID, whatever it might be. The more we get anchored, the more that we'll be able to come. It'll be easier for us to come back to our baseline again. True. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And uh, I want to thank. I noticed that people were posting up. You had put a challenge up to put uh, things around your house with little signs or saying. And I just wanted to share this one that a, a friend had given me because I have this mantra for uh, always be humble and kind. Somebody had given me this great thing that I hang in my office every day about always being humble and kind. So I wanted to put mine up too, so everybody can see. And uh, yeah, it's a great thing I have. It's a reminder from somebody special. So I like it. I look at it every day. And, and you know, those mantras, you know, people wonder what they are. It's kind of the words that kind of resonate with us. And even if every day people have the same mantra, the more that you repeat that in your head, the more that your brain goes to it, right? So today, you know, when we're talking about the way that we learn, we learn by repetition. So my mantra, so the one I really liked was, um, if you can see this, I put it on the front of my journal, but it says, be your own hero. And so when, we, when we repeat these things in our brain or always be humble and kind, be happy, uh, when we can write that down every day, then that anchors it more. When we share it with somebody else, then that even anchors it more in our brain because that's how we learn. And so many times, you know, people get really frustrated. They're like, oh, it didn't work for me before. Or they go back to the past, right? You know, I can't do this. I can't get past it. You know, I'm just going to be the same old way that I used to be. Well, if we go back to those thoughts, then those will be the thoughts that are in the foremost of our brain. 
if we want to change things, if we want to change our life, we have to change our thoughts. That is the only way that we can do it. Because what we think in here, we create, and that's what becomes our reality. Now you're starting to sound like you're reading a little Marcus Aurelius, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I, one, one of the things when I was changing my life, doing things like this, this challenge and trying to get, find God and searching God and religion and things like that, and trying to understand it, is uh, I had read a Marcus Aurelius quote about, basically, are we afraid of death? Because what we're doing today is so much fun, I would miss it. And I thought, no. <laughs> so why? What, what I should be doing every day is so much fun that I miss it. So that's what I wanted to change my life to the point where I'm having a great life. And that, that's why I'm afraid of death is because my life is so great. Whereas most of us are just like, ah, you know, just getting through the days kind of thing, getting through work, getting through every, the bills, getting through it all. And that's not the way we should live. We only get to do this once. So start getting yourself to the point where you can live your life. Right. And that's great timing for my shirt. Okay. <laughs> my shirt today says live happy. So my shirt doesn't say to be happy. And of course, of course, we want to be that way, but we need to live it. So thanks, Rob, for that. It's how we live our life each and every day, knowing that, we, you know, why put off tomorrow what you can do today? But it's those incremental steps. Um, I think you said it before, Rob, it's the moments, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, we are what we think, that's for sure. <laughs> right, and it's those moments that create our life, you know, those moments we get, you know, we get uh, 24 hours in a day, and then we get seven days a week, we get 30 days a month, we get 365 days a year. And well, if we start if, if you think about that, though, you know, if, if you go back in your mind, and you think about any time you tried to make a plan, what was going to happen in two months, six months from now, a year from now, it's never what you plan. It's always something a little different, something life twisted around, and it always ends up wrong. We can't, make the future happen but what you can do is today get up and say i'm going to go to the beach or i'm going to go play with my grandson or i'm going to kiss the person i love or i'm going to be nice at my job and help somebody out today you can do something that that day creates a moment for you and each day try to find those moments along the way and then a month from now when you're looking back on your life you can say that was a great month you know so you can build a life by doing it today not thinking about what's going to happen six months or a year or eight months from now don't worry about if you're going to be 20 pounds lighter in six months. Worry about how you want to live when you're 20 pounds lighter and start living that way. Can't be said any better. That's just it, Rod. Think, of, think about it. Think about that way that you are feeling. And then each day, get that feeling. You know, that's one of the most important things when we look at what it is that we want. It's also about creating the feeling that we want. So it's about creating that feeling of joy. And we know, again, I'll bring the neuroscience hat on, is that we know when we're able to think about it, so when we can visualize it or imagine it in our brain, but if we tag the emotion to it as well, then that's where real success is gonna come from. So when we're looking at, you know, in, I'm gonna weigh 20 pounds less, I'm going to feel this joy in my body because I'm going to be out there, you know, dancing with my grandson and I'm not going to be short of breath. And I have this feeling that I can play and I can run around with my grandchild and I have a happy smile on my face and I'm seeing myself in, in this, you know, pretty uh, dress that I, that I want to wear and I can visualize my grandson and he's playing on the grass and we had a little picnic together and it's just kind of closing your eyes and kind of creating that image of what you see and that image of what you're feeling. And when we can do that day after day, and you know, this is what our little workbook is helping us to do. It's to start to bring out some of these emotions and to help us to visualize some of these things, um, because then this is what we will create within our reality. That's awesome, Doc. Hmm. Well, I'm enjoying it. I hope everybody's enjoying this, uh, this course. It's a great, great little thing to get you on track, start thinking right. Yeah. So I think we covered most of our autonomic pairing today. I do want to just talk about one thing was the choose, chill, chew, chill, cherish, and check. <laughs> because I, I just want to talk about that because one of the key things when it comes to food is to be present and to be mindful when you are eating your meals. So, you know, for many people, uh, many of the great religions of the world, right? 
It is, we take time before we eat our meals, take time for gratitude, take time to say thanks. When we do that, we're pausing to be thankful, but we're also pausing to give our body time to prepare itself for digestion, um, to prepare itself to appreciate the food. So choosing of this title that we have is to choose what you are eat. And when you think about food, choose food that is nourishing to you. Choose food, you know, we have a temple, we have a shell, we have a body, a physical shell, and we have a spiritual core. But think about how can I uplift my body through the foods that I eat? So choose wisely. Two, when we go to, from a digestive standpoint, you know, so many people rush through their meals. But really, when the food enters our stomach, it's meant to be the size of basically baby food. So it's meant to be chewed, some people say chew 40 times, but the food is meant to be to go into our stomach so that then it's more easily digested. Then we think about chill. So chill means to relax. So it means not to go through drive through, not to be rushing, you know, watching the news while you're eating. Um, sure, sitting down with your family, maybe having a discussion about your day, what went well, you know, talking to the kids, talking to the other members of your family, but to give yourself time to have your meals. And then to cherish, you know, mealtime, I think has gone so far away from being a time where families would get together to people really eating for the sake of eating. And so if we can start to change our mindset and think about, I'm going to choose a nourishing food that's going to, uh, you know, it's going to give my body vitality, it's going to elevate my spirit that, so that I can be of service to others, that I can help to others in the world, that I can, you know, I'm cherishing this mealtime as a sacred time. You know, one of the things for me is that when I have my meals, in particular, my evening meal, is I like to set a placemat. I like to get my cutlery out with a nice napkin. I like to put candles, uh, even though I eat alone most of the time, unless I'm out with friends. But when I do that, it really makes that a special moment, that meal time, a special moment. Because when we look at what's going on in the world, you know, we're so lucky for most of us that are able to watch this, you know, on Zoom or on Facebook because we have access to food. But the greatest uh, problem around the world still is malnutrition and, and undernutrition in many, many countries. So if we think about cherishing this moment that we're actually able to sit down and eat, you know, through the years that I've worked in Haiti, I see that many people are eating on one meal a day, which is basically rice with a little bit of of you know, vegetable sauce or tomato sauce. So we really have to cherish that time, not take those meal times for granted. Um, and then to check in, to make that personal check-in when we're having those meal times uh, that we're making it a little bit special. Wow, I like that. Be thankful. Yeah, that's 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 really good. So I, I hope do that more. Of... <laughs> I gotta do that more. I, I rush a little bit through meals. So I never really thought about it that way, but it is a time to sort of think on on what what the world state is in and stuff like that that's good okay and actually for the group i'll share some of my uh, prayers i spent uh, 10 days in thailand a couple of years ago at a buddhist monastery and we uh, only ate two meals a day um but also that was the only time that we could speak and so prayers really took on a really special meaning and uh, i'll post those in case anyone just feels that maybe it would resonate with them uh, to take a little bit of time just to pause before they they have their meal time. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Doc, for another uh, exciting afternoon, making my lunch times a little bit more uh, vibrant around here. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks you, thanks again, Rob, for being on board. Uh, I'm going to share your song after, and also I've got a real little special presentation um, from my nieces and I. It's a mantra that I use. And I'll be sharing that later this afternoon with everybody that awesome. teaches you a little bit about how to pair to get yourself slowed down throughout the day. Awesome. Well, I look forward to it. All right. Thanks again, Rob. Have a great All day. Right. Thanks, guys. You have a great day, Doc. <laughs> See you later, Doc. <laughs>